Hey everybody, Gitan Onsi here and welcome to Gitan Reviews. Today we're going to take a look at Oxab Origins. We're going to talk about the who, the how, what I like and what I didn't like about this animation. Do be warned though, this is a spoiler review. So if you have not watched the animation, it will be the top link in the description. First, let's talk about the who. Johannes Andersen, aka Oxtrop 3000, is a Swedish boy who likes to do things for fun and then dominate. Oxtrop is a rough and tough Swede with a soft, creamy inside. I mean, do I sound tough? Before being the Oxtrop we all know and love, he was a beast of a man in the world of arm wrestling. He saw his older brother do it, so he started doing it too. And he got so dang good at it, he became the IFA World Champion in the 78 kilogram division back in December 2019. You know, as you do. He was cranking out wins until he started doing animations and posted his first animation on YouTube on August 23rd, 2009. Did I get that right? Um, yeah. Before having his presence on YouTube, he became a member of a page called Fluid Anims. Rest in peace. And from there, he joined the clan Style. The leader at the time reached out to Oxov and Oxov was like, Okay. From there, the clan changed members and Oxov became the leader. And the lineup changed to now being Oxov, Flax, Armor Stick, Chemical, Plasma Ghost, and Frank. Who are those people, you may ask? I don't know. I don't care. This video is about Oxov. Johannes came up with Oxov because he liked cyborgs. Is that true? This is the weirdest interview. As a team, Oxtop saw the legendary Hyundu animations and was inspired just like a lot of us were. I was inspired by him. Eric, I'm inspired. Senpai, please no notice me. I, I please notice me. I, I have power. Can and from there, he made a bunch of RNG fights, which stands for Rock Hard Gladiator, and entered a tournament called the Best Sequence Execution, or BSC for sure. And he won back in 2011. He's won the amazing prize of $20, a shirt and a hoodie. Shirt and hoodies. People do like those. They do. Stick and Can Fight merch. Get it, get it. Ooh, you'll love it. Link in the description. From then, he's made a name for himself on Stick Page and now a bigger YouTube channel than mine. For now. So far, there have been a total of eight main story animations, many short collabs, He's worked for Alan Becker and got a big boost in popularity because uh, he's friends with me. No. Also, there was this other animation, pretty popular, whatever. Nothing too important. So that's the who we were talking about. Now let's talk about how they did this animation. This animation was made with Adobe Animate, a Wacom Cintiq 16 and push-ups. Lots of push-ups. Really, you got... Forty. Fifty. It took him two years of working on it on the side while doing collabs with other people such as our mutual friend Power Meep who helped score part of this animation. Other activities took up his time such as digging some graves and as mentioned before working with Alan Becker on the popular series Animation vs Animator. Oxtop is known for his solid and buttery smooth fight animations which he achieves by doing his animations on ones and twos. One, a two, what, what do you mean? Animating on ones means that every frame there is a new drawing. Classic animation in film is done in 24 frames per second. Most TV shows, news programs, and phone video by default are done in 30 frames per second, and things like video games and cringy YouTube videos are done in 60 frames per second. So that means that our friend Oxov likes to make 12 drawings to 24 drawings every second. Why did it take so long to make an animation? Oh my god, it was so short. It takes 24 drawings to make a second of video, and to top it all off, Oxov did this video in 30 frames per second. 30 drawings per second, meaning 1,800 drawings per minute, meaning Ox of Origins is over 10,000 frames long. Hold up. Stigman can fight 11 was 11 minutes, 11 minutes, I do 
I do it in 24 frames per second. I, I, I do times that by the frames and the characters, backgrounds, effects, shading, layers, foreground, background. Too dang long. Too damn long. It takes too damn long to make animations, people. But you know what? We do it because we love it. He loves it. I love it. We all do. But it takes too dang long, bro. Chill. Would you rather go into, I don't know, just some social gathering place and have to ask three different girls on a date <laughs> that you don't know or arm wrestle okay. a gorilla? I'd arm wrestle a gorilla. Now, let's get on to what I like about this animation. This is one roller coaster of a story, so we're gonna get through it together piece by piece. The story starts with our blue spark walking down the street until he gets hungry. We have indeed confirmed stick figures get hungry in the Ox of Universe. They eat, read newspapers, and wonder if RG is dead. It is. The thing that I like about this first part of the story is the atmosphere. Ox of animations usually have very simple to non-existent backgrounds. So watching a town slash city with depth and moving characters in the background is very pleasing to the eye. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He walks by a store that is selling clothes. His hand needs some fresh AA batteries and that triggers a flashback. We see a young and happy looking Oxa being a stuntman getting ready for an action shot. They're ready to shoot the scene when all of a sudden generic mysterious villain blows up the helicopter and it begins to go down fast. This however is not surprising given by this chart here, we know that this shit was about to go down. This scene is chock full of good camera angles, composition, and storytelling. We understand what's happening on screen even without the words or text appearing on screen. Remember kids, show, don't tell. Oxif survives and gets taken to the hospital where Mr. Generic Villain wants to make up for not killing him and offers to give him new hands if he signs the contract. He does. I will now demonstrate how Oxif signed his contract for all of you haters who think it's not possible. We see a montage of his robot hands being attached and then gets injected with some nanobots that give him electrical powers. And the epic battle ensues. Oxlop manages to escape and we flash back to where we started this story. This entire sequence gives a bunch of backstory to a character that in the beginning was really just a blue stick figure that had like electric powers. It also shows a big staple of his character by not killing anyone as he escaped. He fights to win, not to kill. The angles are great and I really enjoy the transition we see from Oxo's eye into his bloodstream. And the smooth transition from jumping at the camera and then snapping back to the present. Ooh, so good. Hold up. Oxo 13. Is his name actually Oxo and then the one that's 13 that could be making it Oxo? Where are the other 12? Does this lab exclusively make robot hands? Did they need to explode the helicopter so he can get new hands? Who's funding this operation? Mom! I feel like I simplify it so much more than what you do. The escape sequence showcases Oxlop's abilities. Starting with the signature glowing eyes, we see his super strength by punching the door and a very agile body when dodging bullets and evading the guards in the hallway. Plenty of electrical explosions and a cool wide angle shot of the facility. This sequence of events is a true testament of how simple looking atmosphere is actually really complex in nature. In particular, the explosions and electrical effects are a perfect example of how something so quick and impactful really takes a super long time to make. Everything on screen is handmade by a Swedish chef. Back to our hero, he bumps into someone who gets instant karma because he said hi and you don't just walk up to saying hi to Oxo or Willy Nilly. Gotta call him Senpai. Oxlop goes after the guy and beats up the thugs that gained up on him. Not without taking some serious damage to the knees. Oxlop was once a great fighter, but then he took damage to the knees. Oxlop as an animator really leans into making his characters have physical obstacles to overcome. It gives the characters a believable outlook and a sense of he can lose because he's actually lost before. So props to Oxlop for making a character that gets damaged and is actually a part of the story arc. At first it was just a running joke to have him like, wanted him like meeting him. Yeah, but I mean now he's like actually 
crippled. In the fight, we see him struggle to his feet, staying true to his character, he spares the mugger that crippled his knees, and afterwards, we'd see him reacting to the pain. Great character animation and great character development through action. This fight is definitely where we see Oxstuff at his most comfortable. This is exactly the kind of animations we've grown to know and love in all of these years. We see damage to the environment, nothing really distracts you from the action, and the idle stick figures are still involved without really doing much until it's their time to jump to action. Classic 2D stick fight with tight choreography and buttery animation. Hmm, so buttery. The fight ends and gets paid and crawls back into the hole from which it came from. We see a throwback picture of Style Clan and a picture of... Who's that? His siblings. 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 He cries a bit because strong sticks cry too and opens up a package from Clan Nemesis. Who's clan nemesis, you ask? Click this link over here, I talk about them. You don't care? Oh wow, okay. This guy, <laughs> at least click this link. Make it worth my while. Don't be a dick and just say don't care. That's rude. Click like. Subscribe. Mm -hmm. Oxlop gears up and he's off the fight for glory, titles, and prizes. We fade to black and we see a golden stick figure in the back. This ending not only shows us what could possibly be the start of a more story-driven story arc for Oxov, but ties things together with Gilligai's Story 6, making everything we just saw canon. Just like the Gilligai Crotterosa ship is canon. <laughs> nice. But now, what I don't like. There are many things you can nitpick and point out as flaws in this animation, but if I could label the bigger problem overall in this cartoon is the lack of identity as to what it is. The title says Ox of Origins, but we're not really getting that. Although we are indeed learning how he got his iconic gauntlets, we're not learning much about Oxov. We know he was a stuntman who lost his hands and then ran away. But throughout the animation, we're shown more hints than answers as to what happened in Oxov's past. This animation relies on you, the viewer, knowing at least some of the lore behind Oxov and his previous RG fights in the past to understand the ending. Like I showed before, the people in the picture are part of his old clan and the one under are his apparent siblings. No other explanation was given as to who those people were or even I who saw all the main Ox of animations didn't catch that it was his family. It wouldn't be such a big deal if it was an easter egg but in the animation Ox of acknowledges the picture it has an emotional reaction. As a newcomer to the animation I'm wondering why is he sad? Who are those in the picture and why did he just beat the crap out of someone who seems to be the same person in that picture? Questions like these are okay to have if you're doing a series or a story arc. But this is an origin story, meaning that someone who has no previous knowledge of the character, the setting, the lore, or even the animator should understand the story from start to finish. You have to tease the, the next video will have all the answers, but what we get teased is Guild Guy's animation. So any and all suspense that was built is now lost because we're focusing on who's that guy. And the people who do know who that guy gets more hype about someone else's cartoon instead of what they just saw. Wait! So, from the perspective of a seasoned stick figure consumer, this story is a really cool insight as to what happened in Oxop's past. However, since this is an origin story, I'm forced to look at this as if something completely new. We can go and poke holes in the story with things like how did he open his parachute with his hands blown off? Who blew up the helicopter? If you have no hands, you can't really sign a contract in that state. Since when can Oxov jump 200 feet in the air? And other things that Oxov, the animator himself, has acknowledged and knows about. He mentioned that this is his first time attempting to make a story-driven narrative and that he's proud of what he did. That right there is honestly the best way to approach anything. So props to Oxal for attempting something new and hopefully he keeps on growing as an animator and as a person. Johannes, I know you're good at digging holes. I just hope you cover them up next time. <sighs> Why do you always hurt me? Overall, this animation was a great revival of a cool character that we all know and love. It missed the mark on delivering a solid plotline, but made up for it with cool action scenes, effects, and bumping music. I give this animation six exploding helicopters out of 10. Simple storyline, cool action scenes, just too many plot holes that distract you from what's happening on screen, 
and relying too much on previous animations to understand this origin story. And eight out of 10 Geeton likes because you got inspired by Wolverine, a fictional character before being inspired by me. I even made you my good luck charm. I have you here, I take you everywhere. This is how I conquer my wife. I was like, hey baby, how are you doing? She's like, oh my God, is that Nox up? I'm like, hell yeah. And she's like, eh, my good. You get inspired by Wolverine? Okay, not okay. But you did make me a birthday animations. <laughs> So what do you think? Did you like the animation? Do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comment section below and also let me know if there's anything you would like me to review. Thank you so much for watching my video. Subscribe and check out some of the other things that I've done. And if you can, please support me on Patreon. It is scientifically proven that my Patreons get a 20% boost stat in Charisma upon becoming a Patreon and an overall stat boost if you get some Stickman Can Fight merch. Thank you so much for watching this video, and like always, thanks, see ya, adios. Oxoff, where is Oxoff? Oxoff, I have someone for you to meet. It is me. No kiss.